going? Yeah. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about sheep showmanship today, and this is kind of for basic beginner showmen that haven't really done a whole lot yet. So, you can see uh, this is Beth Dutton is the sheep's name, and she's kind of a retired show sheep, so she's not in, like, show shape right now. But she kind of knows the drill. She hasn't been shown for quite a while, but she has been shown in the past, so hopefully she'll cooperate just a tad. Um, you'll see I've got this sheep haltered up. When you're first starting working with your sheep, the first thing that I tell everybody is get the sheep used to you, walk them around, get them used to being halter broke. When I say broke, that means they walk on the halter um, without you having to drag them everywhere. The only way to get that done is to practice. Tie them up for periods of time, watch them so they don't try to hang themselves. Um, take them on short walks, walk them with other sheep, and then get them used to walking by themselves. It might take several people helping you the first couple of times you're walking because sheep are not intelligent animals, so they will roll or they will do all kinds of dumb stuff. Just be mentally prepared for some torture. Just kidding, it's not that bad. Most days. Unless you're working with completely white sheep. That's not racist, okay? Facts of life. Anyhow, I've got this sheep on a halter here, and you'll see she's kind of used to being halter broke. She's not going everywhere, but she's not holding perfectly still. In the real world, animals typically don't hold perfectly still unless you've spent an enormous amount of time with them. Again, it takes some work to get to that level, okay? So when I'm learning how to work with my sheep, when I'm learning how to do stuff for showmanship, if I'm a beginner showman, I'm probably going to leave the halter on until I'm comfortable, until my animal's being used to being worked with. After I get it to the point where we're kind of halter broke, for me, the next step is getting this thing to walk well without the halter and to get used to me walking it. Now, to practice, if I don't want the sheep to get away, I'm going to leave the halter on, but I'm not actually going to use the halter to work it. When you're working with sheep, the first step is you can work with them in the pen, but whatever you do, don't stick with that forever. Because if the sheep's always used to being in the pen, when you get it out of the pen, it's not going to cooperate because it's going to miss its friends, it's not going to know where it is, and it's going to get anxiety. Okay? Kind of like middle school students in a new environment. You get anxiety, right? So, we're going to get this thing out and go somewhere else. I always recommend get your animal out of the barn, get it away from everything else when you're working with it, so that it's used to things. Once it's used to that, get it used to working around distractions, kids running around, music blaring. If you have music going in the background, you can use it to help you time things out also, so that way you know how long you've been spending with your project, okay? Um, so we've got this sheep outside in the grass. That's a great spot. The biggest thing you need to think about if you're out in the grass the sun, it's very sunny today. We're going to get warm in a hurry. The good news is it's September, so it's cooler out. So if it's only 60 degrees outside right now, I can be out in the sun a little longer. If it's 90 degrees, I don't want to work my sheep in the sun. I better have a nice shady spot or go when it's cool outside. Um, also working in the grass helps them get a little more traction. If you work them on concrete, you don't want them to be slipping and sliding all over. If you work them on gravel, you don't want them to hurt their feet. So sand is great to work them on. Grass is great to work them on. The other thing you need to think about for grass is if there's going to be a lot of bugs in the grass or a lot of flies, you might want to remember to spray them down with a little fly spray before you start because if they're constantly swatting at flies, you're going to get frustrated and so is the animal. So, back to my showmanship skills here. So when I've got this sheep kind of halter broke and I know kind of what I'm doing with it, I'm going to switch to hand leading. So hand leading is when you go without a halter. Now like I said, if you're not super comfortable taking the halter off right away, one thing I would say is kind of pick up your halter and hang on to it down underneath the animal's chin. When you're hand leading the sheep or any time the sheep's walking, you want to try to keep that head up as much as possible. One, you help control the animal. Two, it's less likely to get away from you then. And three, it makes the animal look better, okay? So when you keep your hand underneath their chin, I always tell people kind of shoot for the middle part of their face. If you go too close to their jaw, they're going to be a lot more likely to put their head down and you're going to have less control compared to the end of their nose. But sometimes if you get too close to the end of their nose, either they want to try to chew on you, or if they back up suddenly and you're not paying attention, they might end up getting away. So I always tell people kind of shoot for the middle part of their jaw. Now when you get really experienced at this, the goal is to be able to lead this thing with one hand. If you're just starting, practice with two hands, keep the other hand right on the back of their head. Don't put it down here on their neck, don't put it here on the back of their back, because that's taking away from the judge's view. So the goal is to kind of get it behind their head. Then, just start to walk it. Now, if your sheep's going to fight you and it's not going to want to go, the best thing is to have somebody else come behind and just give it a little tap to make this animal walk. And the goal is to keep her head up as much as possible. Now, like I said, this sheep's been walked before, so she knows how to keep her head up where it's supposed to be. When she goes to slow down here, 
I can either give it a little pull, and if she doesn't go, I don't have anybody helping me, so I'm just going to take my hand on her tail and give her a little push. But as I do that, I'm going to want to keep her head up in the air. Now, I've got my halter here in case she happens to get away from me, right? So that's how you would practice that, keeping both hands up, uh, keeping her head up with both hands. Once you get to a good point, then you can eventually go to just one-handed. Keep your other hand kind of ready just in case she decides to back up. Now you'll notice you can't see my fingers on the side of her jaw. I've done this enough, this sheep has practiced up enough, where I've kind of got my fingers tucked right on the inside part of her jaw. Not cutting off her breathing, nothing like that, but by hiding my fingers it makes it look just a little bit classier yet. So that's a little bit on hand leading. The more you do this, the better they become, right? When you go to set up your sheep, I'm going to switch this way so we don't look into the sun here. Watch her get away from me in a showmanship video. You'll see here if they're not cooperating, use my hand as leverage. Okay, so when I go to set a sheep up, there's two basic things for setting, three basic things for setting a sheep up. One, always keep their head up. Doesn't matter if the sheep is still or the sheep's walking, always keep their head as close to a 90 degree angle as you can, okay? Two, setting the sheep's legs. The goal is to have the sheep's legs what's called square. So we want the back legs, why don't you go around behind for a second? We want the back legs set right next to each other, and our goal is to have the back of the hawk right here straight down from the hip. So we can get them as wide as they can look naturally, but we don't want to set their legs too wide because otherwise it can potentially make them look bad structured. Or it looks like we're just trying purposely to make them too wide. So I'm going to get her legs set like that. Now from the side, you can see her legs are set directly across from another. Front legs, same thing. We're going to set them what's called square right across from each other. The other thing we need to pay attention to besides setting them square is making sure that they're stretched enough. We don't want the sheep too squished like this because otherwise she's not going to want to what we call brace very well. We also don't want them too stretched. like this because otherwise it's not going to make them look as good structured and again they're not going to want to brace as good. So here we have her legs set almost. Kind of where we want them. Now for new beginner showmen it's harder to get those back legs. You'll see one of the things that I did was I took my hand and put it over the top to give me a longer lever to reach back. Also, when I reach back to set, I kind of almost set the sheep against my leg, my left leg, so she can't really go anywhere. Since I'm a short person, it's easier for me to look between her back legs as I use this hand to kind of slide it backwards. I'm not grabbing way down on the leg because that's a long ways for me to reach. I'm grabbing up higher, and I don't ever want to grab right here on the joint because it's going to be uncomfortable for the sheep. So when I have the sheep's leg set, the next thing is to what's called brace. So bracing is basically where you're pushing into the sheep and the sheep is pushing back into you to get its muscles to pop. Now this sheep braces almost too hard. So she's maybe a bad example to show. But you can see the difference kind of in what she looks like here. So now she's bracing, her muscles are popped and we can see how much more shape she has compared to if we just let her stand here. Okay. Most of the time when you're bracing sheep, you're also trying to get them to look leveler, just a little showier at the same time. So when I go to brace, I'm using my arm to kind of help me. Now I'm a short person, my arm's going to go under their chin. If you're a taller person, you might keep your hand over the top of their head. For me, it's just easier to kind of rest it a little bit on my forearm. I'm using my hands to prop up their ears. I'm not pointing them straight up in the air. We're not showing shevets. If you don't know what those are, look it up. We're also not showing rabbits. We don't want little rabbit ears. So, prop their ears up without making them look really high up in the air. It just makes them look a little bit classier. You'll notice that my leg, my left leg, is kind of in front of the sheep, right? That's the leg that I'm using to actually push the weight into the animal. My right leg is my bracing leg. So that's where I have my weight on, so the sheep can't push me backwards. When I'm bracing, I'm pushing into the sheep and I'm lifting up at the same time. Now if I need to, if my sheep's top kind of pops up like that, I can use my fingers to push it down just a little bit. A lot of people develop a really bad habit of jamming down all the time 
don't let it become a bad habit. That's a little bit about the basics of how to show a sheep.